This is a huge change that TikTok's made. And that's within how they were uh, matching people with advanced matching through the pixel. So in the past, they have always had uh, the pixel matching set up and pixel tracking set up so that you really only get event fires and audience building based off of traffic that you were sending from your TikTok campaigns. Anything outside of your TikTok campaigns was blind to the pixel. Now, if you have advanced matching on, anybody that comes to the site, whether it be from organic, direct, or meta, if they do match the advanced matching settings, then you are able to retarget them. So that change alone has pushed retargeting from something that works on some accounts or not to like a very, very viable strategy. If you're a D2C brand on Shopify and you're not using Black Crow, then you're leaving significant revenue on the table. Black Crow uses your own data to help you identify customers returning to your site who would otherwise remain anonymous. The more customers you can identify, the more email and SMS abandonment messages you can send. You'll see incremental revenue almost immediately without having to change any of your existing flows. The best part? All it takes is a one-click integration. There's zero development work required. Head on over to blackcrow.ai slash DTC to get started with a free 30-day trial. It's all killer, no filler. I'm Eric, and today we're here with Spencer from Pilot House's TikTok team uh, to talk a little bit about the three stages of growth and stability that we see with our accounts. But I wanted to ask first, why is it important to think about things in terms of these stages of growth on TikTok? It's something that we're finding more and more useful to, uh, to think about because it's you could just be managing your accounts and being like, okay, it's time to test this, time to test that. You know, performance is good, performance is bad, but then kind of knowing a bit of the life cycle um, and what stage of growth your account is at, it's really helped us understand uh, one, what the brands that we've been working with for a short amount of time, for a long amount of time, and then also with the dozens of, of brands that I've spoken with. Um, to give them better ideas of what stage they may be in. Um, and I'll break down these stages, what you can do to, to uh, identify yourself as being in those stages, and then what you can test and focus on. And that's really what I want to share over today uh, with the brands that are listening, is uh, that it's not just a siloed state that, that you're at. It really is helpful to know, you know where you are on the growth of, of your account and then where the areas to focus are. Because in these later stages, there are things like your 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 campaigns do mature in a way in terms of of the volume and in terms of the algorithm finding finding your audience. It, so it's, it, it does it allow advertisers who are unsure of what to expect with TikTok have a, a guide of how to sort of stay the course and get to a place they want to get to. It can be. I would say that the the most valuable the most value that this that's going to come out of this episode is those that have already tested a little bit. Um, or perhaps are are on like the later stages. So this isn't uh, this isn't like a one two month plan. This is looking at a year plus, uh, and where you are in that first year and where you are onwards. There's a lot of people that, that have tested on TikTok already, you know, and they may still be on on stage one. Perhaps they got to stage two, and then a lot of people are are kind of finding this tricky area when uh, they get to what what we're calling like our stage three performance. If you are looking to to start off and launch. Uh, on TikTok and just be like, what do I do in that first initial steps? Probably just type in TikTok uh, on the DTC newsletter. And we do have the DTC podcast and we do have other episodes about how we like to launch our brands. And those will definitely be way more helpful. And then you can come back to this and uh, and see where the next stages are for you. Long-term TikTok success is what we're talking about and how to, I... okay, very cool. All right, let it rip. Let's hear it. What's stage one? Stage one, very aptly named stage one. <laughs> Um, so that's how you know it's first. That's how you know. It's kind of what is the discovery phase. So stage one is essentially that first month that you are that you are testing. Um, I'm not going to leave a ton, of, uh, a ton of time on this, but it's just that, that wide open sky. It's that time when you want to test, you know, all the kinds of creatives that you might want to uh, that you might want to be testing on that you have available to you. All the audiences, broad, narrow. Um, you know, this could also be your brand restarting after, you know, six months, say you had a test six months ago and you want to restart. Uh, you should still be in this, you know, blue sky scenario of, okay, we really need to find 
which area of our content and which area of our product actually works for people within the content. And that's really what you're trying to test for. And a lot of it comes down to how much information you have within your ads as well. So like testing uh, informative hooks versus entertaining hooks and, and all that. This is all stuff that, that's been part of uh, that like launch episode that, that we did with you, Eric. So that should be familiar to, to our longtime listeners. But I mean, I'm sure you could probably attest to this as well, Eric. There's there's an exciting part of this like phase one, that blue sky kind of time on on, uh, on accounts. Very cool. And I imagine there's an aspect that you have to keep of that even ongoing in, in TikTok because you constantly have to be testing kind of blue sky and new things in such a voraciously uh, hungry platform when it comes to creative. Without a doubt. Yeah. And that does bring up a, a really good point. Of simply, I'm like identifying these three stages and there's, and there's ones after as well. You know, the, the stages can go infinite. Um, I'm going to lay out these, these, these phases that your account might be going through, but it massively varies. It varies per, per account, per product, um, how you're favored in, in the algorithm. There's a lot of things that go into this. This is just a bit of a broad uh, overview that will help to be like, okay, you know, we don't have that much data on anything at, at, at the moment. And to your point, Eric, it could be something where you have a bit of stability, but then you need to kind of bring in this phase one mentality of, okay, time to go back to the drawing board. And it's essentially the phase of finding your direction and finding where those initial wins come from that then lead you on to stage two. So what are the benchmarks you're looking for at the end of stage one that can signal that you're ready to go on to the subsequent number st stage? Simply just any kind of traction. Um, okay. From those initial tests, you can have traction right off the, right off the bat. You can see... You know, you might be hitting, it might be 50%, it might be 70% of where your goal is on the platform. And it could be those little breadcrumbs of where you're wanting to go. The The opposite for phase one is going to be just like really flat data. So you're looking at um, very low uh, average watch time per creative. You're looking at very low um, click through rate and obviously very low sales and, uh, and kind of conversion metrics. Along with that, it all kind of comes back to that golden triangle that we've spoken about before. So all that we just like blast. We try to pretty much allow the the winning creative to like elevate us out of stage one. So it's it's just finding that traction, narrowing down to where those those winners are. It's just variety testing, iterating, and then it's where you kind of actually get a little bit of uh, success on some creative, which then brings you to phase two, which is... Hold on one sec. Oof. I want to get on to phase two, but we're, we brought up yeah, Golden yeah. Triangle, and I know we have a lot of repeat listeners, but just please shape out the Golden Triangle for our listeners that you're looking for in phase one. 100%. We'd love to. No. I This is an extremely valuable way of looking at your creatives. And for those that, that, are, that are new to the Golden Triangle, it's the relationship between the average watch time, the click-through rate, and the conversion rate. And it's a lot... Uh, of trying to find where your creative lies within that triangle. Obviously, if the conversions are there, then you kind of don't have to worry about it too much. But typically when you're starting out, you don't have the conversions and you're trying to see where to direct your your content. And that's kind of when the, the base of that triangle comes in. You can look at how's your average watch time and you can look at how your click-through rate is. And then you can balance between those two and see how you can kind of direct uh, and then just bring it to that to that peak of the triangle with conversion rate. And a perfect example of that is, let's say you have a super good average watch time. You made some creative that hooks people to the end. You have an average watch time of seven seconds. You know the click through rate. You know might be 0.8. Uh, you know it's decent, but then there's no conversions coming in. That actually allows you to pull back on the on the hook to get people to watch more of it. And you might want to pull back and, and try to make some creative that has the elements of that first video, but then pushes a bit more sales or a bit more product in the first like five seconds, say, and then your average watch time decreases. It goes down to five seconds, goes, goes down to four seconds, which on paper, on desktop, doesn't look that great, but it does allow you to, to, to it allows the people that are watching actually know about the product. But they actually know what the price is. They know that they're watching a video for a product and then it'll improve that last part of the triangle, the conversion rate. 
triangles come in all shapes and sizes. So they're usually just triangles, but they come in all sizes and orientations. So you just got to find the right orientation of your triangle with those three metrics. Awesome. Glad we covered that. Okay. So you've, you've found your, a bit of your, your, your golden triangle has come together in at the, towards the end of stage one, you've got some winning creatives, you've got some angles and avenues and audiences that are starting to convert at not, maybe not your, your goal metric, not exactly where you want to be, but they're, you're seeing progression towards your goal metric. Uh, that's stage, stage one. So stage two, hit me up. How do, how does that look? Stage two is going to present itself to you based off of you like constantly following these these winners and constantly improving. Stage two is the growth, and TikTok can can take the growth of an account uh, and it, it manages it extremely well. But it's based off of uh, a few things that you might be able to see on your account. One is that within your your creative tests uh, and your evergreen tests and your consolidated tests the platform will start to allocate the majority of the spend towards one or two of your creatives uh, and it'll heavily lean in that direction and it's pretty much the sign of okay this creative style is pushing the is pushing um the audience in the direction that, that we want it's it's the kind of creative we want to have on platform it's the creative that's getting you the results um and if you put a bit of scale behind it then you know, it's able to manage it and it's just expanding on the audience that you're already hitting and it's able to manage that expansion and scale. And you'll pretty much feel at this point, like with that winning creative, anything you test with it is is going to do well. We we see this time and time again with our uh, the brands that we have been testing with and that we've been advertising for, that you just test these, these varieties within stage one and then you can have just this hero video that brings you out of, uh, you know, that 70%, you know, let's say between 50 and 100% of, of what your goal is, and suddenly you're at 120% uh, percent of, of your goal, you're over it, and you're scaling up, and it's able to handle it, and it's really what you want to see. You may see things like CPMs uh, increase, and that's actually okay. The That's the algorithm favoring your content and knowing exactly who that content's for, so that's not anything that should deter you, and... <clears throat> Uh, you can take that winning creative and put it in new audiences and it'll run just, just well. This is, this is the, the best stage to be in. It's massive expansion uh, opportunity. And like this can happen after, let's say two weeks of testing through to three months. It's, it's just, it's just us as advertisers. And it can be creative. It can be one creative only. It can, like you can stage two can be fully facilitated by one single hero creative. You've planted the seed in stage one. Ideally, you want more than one, but quite often you're saying it can be that on TikTok. It's really that one hero creative that works across audiences. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, and it's not anything that should really deter you. Um, it, it can scale with that one creative very, very well. And you know, we take what we can get and like. TikTok is allowing us to, to use this creative that's just resonating with people extremely well. And you should scale on that. And you can scale super well. Some things to test is if you have that, that core campaign with the core audience, you can just dupe that out. Uh, and this is if you're a little bit uh, unsure about, um, you know, just a little bit hesitant about going too aggressive with scale. You can always just dupe out that winning campaign, you know, double, triple, you know, however aggressively you might want to be the budget on that secondary campaign and see how a campaign does just starting at that at that budget, just starting at that broad hit of, of audience. And if it doesn't do well after, you know, three days or so, then you can go back to your bread and butter, the one that has been winning. A few other things that you should be testing during this period, just top of funnel expansion, broader audiences. If you're hitting these like balanced audiences, test it with wide open, test it with you know, female only is wide open in the U.S. You should give TikTok pretty much as much as much rope as you can, uh, so that it can expand without any uh, any kind of restrictions. And this is a good time to do it. You know, if you if you wanted to test out more aggressive uh, scaling strategies, if you wanted to test out a more reserved scaling strategy, we've seen both work. Uh, it could also just be down to your buyer's preference, but the, this phase two is really just you found uh, 
that bit of creative, that's that creative style that you can then, you know, iterate off of and take what you think is the winning aspects and, and try and beat out that, that winning creative. Cause you know, we don't want to rely on, on one or two winning creatives. It's just typically what, what we see during this like growth phase. And then you can take those, those learnings and just like pump it through uh, your creative queue and see if you can test out new hooks, new hero images, new, you know, whatever, whatever that aspect might be, it's kind of that time. Um, but this is honestly, this is like as good as the stages, as, as good as the stages get the solid days, you know, it's yeah. It, yeah. You find that initial success. It's, it's very fun. It's funny. I think of the ads that I see on TikTok, and it's often the same ads over and over and over again for a while. So I, it does make sense that when you have an ad that cracks that attention code, it's it, it's it's interesting. It works across different areas. Do you ever find ones that like can't get out of? Do you ever find ones that like? That I guess often you probably find ones that do well in specific audiences, but then you try to take them broader. You try to add scale to them, and they turn out they, they're, they're like false winners. Or once you generally find a like a winner, it, it, you do find that you can scale it across different audiences. Yeah, without saying you know absolutes, um, I'd say typically the winners that we have do pretty well once you like scale out. Like let's say you're making something for. Uh, you know, like beauty and style within a beauty and style audience. And it does extremely well there. Um, especially if you've trained the pixel like that, once you go broad, it's really not going as it's not going perfectly broad. It's still staying within where the algorithm knows that, uh, that people are going to resonate with that creative. Uh, so it's typically it does. Okay. Once you go a little bit broader, um, that being said, there's absolutely exceptions and there's times where, you know, these balanced audiences uh, end up being like our, our scale audiences and we can scale those up um, for like months on, on end. It's just a matter of, in general, we like to go broader because it, it just lengthens the, the time of the creative, um, which is really what, what we're trying to do. We're trying to take a creative style, could even just be like one, you know, ad ID post and just keep snowballing that it's a great creative visual. It's uh, it's saying all the right stuff. You know, the CTA is there, whatever the elements might be. Uh, and then snowballing with all of the social proof on top of it, which we have seen, you know, after two plus months uh, of these winning creatives that we think that, that is like the, really the thing that's bringing people through, uh, you know, continuously interested in the product uh, and like seeing it on the free page is seeing the social proof just grow. The days are getting shorter, shopping lists are getting longer, and marketers' hair joins the autumn leaves in the deciduous tradition of falling out. That's right, it's November, and that means it's e-commerce go time. This Q4, make one-to-one -one conversations with your customers your number one revenue channel with PostScript. With innovative technology, a customer-first mentality, and products like SMS sales and Fondue Cashback, PostScript is the preferred SMS revenue platform for over 12,000 Shopify merchants. With PostScript, you'll learn SMS best practices, data-driven sending strategies, list growth tactics, and so much more. You can learn more about PostScript and receive an exclusive offer by visiting postscript.io slash DTC. Before we go to stage three, let's stay in the fun zone in stage two here. You mentioned pixel training. Is that something that gets handled in, in stage one generally? Is that like, like just, I think we've probably talked about this, but I'm just, I'm just interested in a refresher. What are the parameters for how you train a pixel, a TikTok pixel? Well, TikTok will say one thing and advertisers might say, might say another. They say you should be getting out of the learning phase and get like 50 conversions in over seven day period. And, you know, for like the handbook, that could be something, it's not something that I personally suggest, like the TikTok reps and, and what they say the algorithm needs to be trained. That is, that is what they lay out. Um, but for us, it's, it's a smaller, it's a smaller lever that actually contributes to the scaling up into the performance. Um, so it's something that we kind of keep in mind. Uh, but it's really just how do you find that creative that resonates with people? Um, and then you can actually, there's, there's a few things that, that we definitely keep in mind. One is if it's a, if it's a niche product, it's best to hit more niche audiences within interests or hashtags and get those tests out so that, you know, the, the pixel 
you know, which who's essentially blind. The pixel's got no idea what's going on. It's uh, it's it's just you running fish off in the right day. ponds it's, to start. You, totally. When you've got a specific lure, you fish in the right ponds, right? Yeah. So then, when you go broader, then it's trained and it at least has uh, a knowledge of which fish it's uh, it's trying to it's trying to catch. Another great example is starting over like a sales period. Is just if you start during a sales period, then it does just like kickstart that fire. Instead of building up with a little kindling, you're chucking a, a can of gas on there. So that's a really good strategy, I'd say. Nice. Pixel training 101. Uh, nice. Okay, so we're in phase two. We've got these. We've got some winners crushing. We're scaling vertically. What are the telltale signs of falling out of stage, stage two into the less preferable stage three? Yeah, it, it is, I would say, less preferable. One, because it doesn't quite have the same growth and, and excitement. But it's still stage three is still uh, a really good time uh it's just what we kind of see as like an inevitability that that your winning creative styles will start to dip that um you know you'll be less favored in in the algorithm let's say and just overall your performance just starts to to dip a little bit and everything that has been working in the past stops you know having the same kick uh on the account um, so this is our stage three. I'm, I'm kind of nicknaming it the midlife crisis stage because you're you're there. You well. you've, you've done all the right stuff. You've uh, you're in like a good place, but then there's still just like, what what can I do to to like get this going again to to get a little bit of fire going? Um, and just for a bit of timeline as well, I've seen brands hit this you know after they have been in stage two for potentially six to twelve months that they've been running on on the winds of these top creatives that uh, they just have a really good evergreen campaign going that they're that they're bringing in new winners to typically you know there's still just like over a period like a very small amount of creative that ends up taking the majority of of the spend which you know is ultimately good you're bringing people into the site you're hitting your goals you're still scaling you're hitting you're at a good scale for when like big sales periods comes around. And, and you're still testing probably small refinements in there. You're testing other things, even though, and even if I'm curious about how often you displace the original winner with things that you test when you try to create variations that are similar to the winner, or if quite often that original winner holds out. Yeah. Uh, it's a variety. Like we still test, we still have like sections of our, of our tests that are still that blue sky. Okay. Let's see if we can beat this winner. It, you know, it's like, you're going into the into the ring and like you're trying to take out, you know, Mike Tyson's. Like he, there Spencer. has to be a way. Yeah. <laughs> there has to be a way to, to do this. And like absolutely, there's like small changes off of uh, winners that you can bring on in. Just iterating for sales periods off those winners are, are huge, and like duets and, and things like that. Um, but typically, it's it's just this really core campaign uh, that's kind of running as, as like that top of the top. And then we do tests underneath and then try and test against those, those evergreens. And, you know, there's times where the, where the top creative will, you know, it'll just be consistent at let's, let's say like a perfect 100% of what our goal can, what, what our goal like ROAS is. And it's just been there for, you know, two or three months at, at this point. And then we bring in a fresh creative and that creative is at 150% of, of what our, our goal ROAS is. And like, we love it. We want to back it more. We tested in new things. Um, and then it absolutely, it can like take over from that winner, or it could have like a quick kind of spike uh, over the next like month or two, and then kind of like dwindle down. And then, you know, the, the evergreen one uh, holds out and stage three, uh, good old midlife crisis stage is, a stage that I've spoken to quite a few brands about before where they've been running at, at like a decent scale for quite some time. And just like things uh, are just don't have the same kick that, that they used to, that they're kind of starting to slow down and they're starting to have, you know, a, a, a little bit of discouragement about the platform. And like, we've had brands that have gone through the, the full stage process and we kind of adjust for it. And so it's these adjustments and also what like the modern advertising on TikTok looks like that uh, I have like a bit of a list here that I can share over that 
we really suggest like, okay, identify that you're in this stage. Don't really, don't get discouraged that it's, that it's over and that there's like nothing more that you can do. Mm -hmm. There is. uh, And you kind of just have to like realize that you're in this stage three, not fight it and work with it. Much like a midlife crisis. So, so, (laughs) so what, so what are these actions? Just so you don't buy a sports car. Number one. It's actually number one on our list is buy a sports car. So that's crazy that you brought that up. <laughs> you, get a, you get a katana. You buy a golden <laughs> katana. Man, it would be nice though, wouldn't it? If that would, yeah. if that would get you out. It's just uh, yeah. <laughs> buying things on, uh, on the company If you're a guru, card. it might. If you're, if you're selling education as a guru, it might. You know, having a, a, a sweet supercar might really help your ass. Yeah, so. especially if you're like threatening. But back on back on topic here. Uh, sorry, were there specific things we're looking or that we want to do in stage three once we're once we're in the uh, the midlife crisis? Absolutely, yeah. So all those signs that I said that will kind of help you identify that, that you're within this within this stage. And there's absolutely things that, that you can do to work with what uh, the platform is giving you and to refresh um, what was you know a very exciting phase. So a few things to, to keep in mind is that. Uh, we are hitting a mass amount of people and TikTok doesn't particularly love showing people the same ad over and over. They've started being more okay with it. They've started being more ad placements. It is, it is continuously improving, which is awesome. But then when you look over that six months, 12 month period, that's when it does kind of start to, to shift away and go, okay, maybe we shouldn't be continuously uh, showing this. And on top of that, people are starting to become familiar with that, look of that creative with the look of your website with what the creators sound like all these little visual things can just tilt the performance in the bad direction that that you won't really be looking for or you've gone through everybody and you're starting to hit uh you know a less intentful audience and that less intentful audience just isn't quite uh they just don't have any intent they've never bought anything on platform and uh the creative you've been running just doesn't quite work for them so and you're blind to everyone that, else. That, that, Anyone else that might work at this point after you've seen an ad a hundred times, you're just it's not gonna work, right? People are totally tuned out to it. For sure. So as like a really general note, knowing that that's the case and then trying to think of how you can have a full visual refresh can be huge. If you have general hooks that tend to work with a certain creative with a in a certain space, you know, totally change that up. If you have been in front of uh, you know, your production line for, for a bit, just like talking to the camera and bringing people through, you know, go to a park and then start like POV and, and have like five seconds of, you know, gibberish in the, in the start. Just really think about how you can hit those same people, but with visuals that they've just never seen before. A pattern intro, uh, so, something that they're not expecting. Totally. Because you've pretty much proved that, that people do like the product. They just have, uh, you know, seeing everything that, that they want to see. They, they might still like the product. They might still like the brand, but on TikTok, if they, you know, get used to that, uh, if they get used to that style, then they'll just swipe right past it. You know, they're looking for, for quick hits. And so you kind of just have to have, yeah, pretty much just, just new stuff. I like that. So I'm, I'm liking this the phase one, two, three, but I'm thinking about, I feel like phase one is like the courtship phase where you're sort of dating, uh, dating multiple people, figuring out what works right. Then you get to the honeymoon phase, phase two, everyone's favorite, where you're getting all these winners that are popping off. We're now in the midlife crisis phase. So we have to get through the midlife crisis phase and into the golden years. So that's the next phase is figure out in, in, this, in this rubric here is how do we get into the golden years, that, which I feel will be stage four. Totally. Um, a few other things that, that would really help out for stage three as well. Uh, start thinking about about actually having the new look with multi-touch points in terms of retargeting. This is actually something that's just come up over the last two, three months or so. So this is a huge change that TikTok's made. And it wasn't anything that they particularly announced. And it's something that flew under my radar for, I think it was out for a month or so before I found out about it. And I'm just like, How did nobody tell me about that? How did I not know? And that's within how they were uh, matching people with advanced matching uh, through the pixel. So a bit of a bit of like history for the pixel in the past, they have always had uh, the pixel matching set up and pixel tracking set up so that you really only get uh, event fires and uh, audience building based off of, 
based off of traffic that you were sending from your TikTok campaigns. If that makes sense. Pretty much anything outside of your TikTok campaigns was blind to the pixel. And that has just changed here over the last few months. Now, if you have advanced matching on, anybody that comes to the site, whether it be from organic, whether it be from you know direct or meta or Google, like anywhere that, that they've come, if they do have if they do match the advanced matching settings, then you are able to retarget them. So that change alone has pushed retargeting from something that you know, works on some accounts or not to like a very, very viable strategy. Retargeting should kind of be in your funnel regardless up until this point, but uh, entering phase three here, it does allow you to think, okay, how can we hit people on with like multiple, multiple uh, touch points with different visuals? You know, Google tells us that we're going to need to hit, Google Analytics tells us we need to hit people like 12 times before people convert. That's That's their metrics based off of you know, all platforms, it's not just TikTok wide, but if we know that we can just hit people multiple, multiple times, and then eventually like that conversion rate will go up, then that should be entered into uh, our strategy. Um, the last thing, the last thing that, that I'll drop for this phase as well is thinking a little bit more organic, specifically using that creative that just has been spinning its tires um, within paid and then transition to being a bit more organic focused. And not only does that obviously just have a long-term effect in terms of people finding the brand and everything that comes along with organic, da, 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 but it also allows you to spark ads and spark ads, uh, especially if it has any social proof behind it, do perform really well. And it is a new look for people. Um, they're able to, like when they click on your page, it looks different opposed to just going to the website which kind of just goes in line with just the refresh. It's time to get away from what has been working in phase two. Don't just keep, you know, going up and like spinning your tires, trying to get this hill. Time, time to take a second, reassess, how do you hit people new? And uh, that's another strategy to, to get out of it because stage stage three is absolutely not the end for, uh, for your account. There are still ways to stay on platform and stay uh, consistent and we're working with our brands to make that happen. Uh, it can be discouraging, but with all these and at least knowing that this stage is something that, that a lot of brands see of just like filling up uh, on hitting everybody for the first time. And then as soon as things start to, to decrease when things were super stable, just getting a little bit discouraged. It doesn't have to be the case. You can push through it and then get to, as Eric is saying, the golden years. Which we're not 100%. We're, we're, once we get, we push through. The thing is, it also just might cycle back to stage one again because then you're actually back in that active dating phase where you're looking for something else that's going to get over for your audience. I, I, I like that concept of palate cleansing in a way and coming back with, yeah, you kind of have to come back with a, a new, you can't be a one trick pony essentially. So kind of coming back to that. Uh, yeah, I think there's a ton of really uh, interesting tips in here. And, and I didn't know that about the pixel matching that's now happening on TikTok. That's great. Great news, uh, just in terms for the omni-channel ecosystem that, that TikTok represents. Totally. Thanks for listening to today's episode. If you're not getting the D2C newsletter, you can subscribe for free at directtoconsumer.co. And if you want to learn more about Pilot House's all-killer, no-filler services, take off to pilothouse.co. I'm Eric Dick, and this has been the D2C Podcast. We'll see you next time.